Hello everyone, I'm really pleased to be here uh, today with you. So I'm gonna tell you about my story uh, in open source communities. So I'm Manel, I'm not from Hungary, I'm from Tunisia, and I came here for my internship. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, uh, so let's start like, uh, Okay, who knows what is diversity? Oh yeah, nice. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, for me diversity is more to, uh, uh, to, uh, to recognize the, differ dif the difference between each other when we are working in one company. Like whatever the gender or the sex orientation or uh, whatever you are thinking about or the fact or the mindset you have, we just have to we have just to accept each other and we have to um, to understand our uh, our differentiation about thinking. Um, yeah, and how to get the diversity uh, and the inclusion in our company? Um, what I from my experience, uh, what I have seen already in my uh, in my country, that always women are a little bit distracted from the IT company. Uh, like we can find many women in the IT company, or we can find many women in the um, uh, in the uh, any industry of IT or uh, or in the universities of uh, computer science. But the problem that uh, they could be like excluded from the group. Like you find like just guys are working on something about the product, and the, uh, the women just making some documentation or something that is not related to the coding. Or uh, you can find that uh, they will be separated by sex orientation or something. Like no, I can't work with this, or I can work with this, or um, they they can be like. Uh, kind of integrated together in one group, but really they are not working in the same group. Uh, but the, the thing that uh, to have the uh, diversity and the inclusion in your company, that they, they have to be working together uh, as one group, as one team, uh, every time. And I actually I am really glad that I found this uh, here in Hungary, in Budapest. The company I'm working with now, so I found myself, um, the only girl in the data platform team, and like all the guys with me are from different religion, and they are Hungarian, and they always speak in their language, and I always try to like check in on them, like, hey, what you said, I need to understand, like even if it's something out of box, I'm always curious, and I will always want to want to understand everything. So really, the the good thing is to have. Uh, to have the inclusion in your uh, in your company, like to uh, to get many different persons from different religion, different culture, different race, different uh, different sex orientation, different gender to to be working together, because many thoughts, many um, many mindsets, and it will be resolved many many uh, other issues that you can figure out about about them uh, in the other case. The global understanding, as I said, from uh, of the uh, diversity and the inclusion is uh, to uh, to get the race and the, uh, the ethnicity, the gender, the sexual orientation. The, uh, the we can be like from different generation, and uh, we work together. Uh, we can we can like have a group like what well, someone is disabled and he can. Uh, like he's, he has some phys physical disability or something, and he can be working with some other people. And I will tell you an example about that afterward. And uh, like have a group with different thinking styles is really more important because it it can resolve many many problems uh, for your products or for your service that you are uh, working on. <laughs> So yeah, so um, as I said, I, I present myself at first that's as just I'm from Tunisia, but also I'm Mozillian, and uh, I have been involved in Mozilla community for five years ago now, and uh, it wasn't really my, my 
my starting as a woman in um, in the um, open source community because I started uh, kind of before my university. I was really, uh, I remember in my high school I was so much uh, addicted by programming languages. I started with Pascal as all the other people and then I learned many about the HTML and I made a website for my high school uh, to facilitate more the uh, administration stuff there and then I joined the University of the Open Source, um, of the uh, Computer Science and there I found an open source club and I already used Linux for like one year ago so I like, I, uh, I found my path kind of easy and uh, then I joined the community after, in 2013 so I don't know, after maybe two years <laughs> in the university and uh, how the diversity and inclusion actually is working at Mozilla So Mozilla, you can find, I love this picture, it's taken, uh, it's not really a picture, it's like a mosaic picture, it's taken in the, the last uh, work week in Hawaii. There is many pictures of many, many people, and like we count them together and we got the, uh, the fox, the panda who, uh, sorry, I just know it in French. <laughs> so we got the panda who, uh, as a picture of many, many, many Mozillians. And uh, the thing in Mozilla that uh, you can find many people from many, many countries around the world and they are working together in one, in, as, as a team, as a family, in, in just one project, an open source project, and they respect each other and they, um, uh, they understand the, uh, the, uh, the, the different things and uh, they share everything about the, uh, the source, about the uh, mindset, about the thinking, about the, uh, about the thoughts or the insight they, uh, they already had. So Mozilla is no profit organization and it's driven by, uh, um, by a culture of openness and collaboration as I said, like uh, there is many there is many, um, many different cultures, so they will be collaborate together to, uh, to work on some project. And uh, they, uh, in Mozilla, they are welcoming uh, participation by everyone, so they don't care about your, uh, your race or your culture or your, or your religion or where are, where are you from exactly. Just if you want to contribute, you just go ahead and contribute. And uh, they are always available to listen and help and, and facilitate. And they provide many, many programs to facilitate and help people, even disabled people. And uh, there is another program who is like, it's a small community uh, under the Mozilla community. And we call it uh, WOMOS. It's women and Mozilla, but when someone heard about it, he said, oh yeah, that's really so much uh, sexist or racist that they just thought about themselves and they are just uh, a woman community, but no. Um, actually, Womos is composed of men and women. And uh, it's mostly about increasing the visibility of women in the first, uh, in the first communities, like uh, increasing the contribution of, of women in any other uh, open source community, not just, not just Mozilla. And uh, get more women in tech. And uh, you don't need really to be just geek to be in tech. You can, you can like, even if you don't know how to write code, you can you can get in tech by other other things to do like it's not, it's not just about programming and about code. So yeah, I'm uh, I can that I can say that I'm part of them because I have been involved in some other um, open source communities before and then I like 
like focus it more uh, with Mozilla and I found my path there and I felt more comfortable in Mozilla because I don't know if you heard or not, there is many um, many discrimination in other open source community as you go to as Fedora, I don't know, at least in my country. I have no idea like uh, in the other countries how it works. Uh, yeah, and uh, the thing is when I start with Mozilla, I was like, I know how to code, but I don't know how to how to contribute or how to how to start exactly in Mozilla project. And uh, in that um, in that period, I was like uh, making many sessions for uh, teenagers, people, uh, for kids about uh, about web languages, teaching them about HTML, CSS, and uh, a little bit of JavaScript. And then I had the idea to make the same almost the same program but with disabled people and I was looking in my country if there is uh, any center of disabled people that they provide uh, some IT sessions I, they have at least they have computer or not they know what is, what is computer they use it they have um, they have uh, internet or not and I found like two um, two, uh, two center of disabled people and uh, I had like um, agreement with them, nothing serious, just I was offer offering my um, uh, offering my help as free for one year, uh, teaching both of them um, one it works and the other really doesn't work as I expected. But the one it works, it, it was like close to my university and uh, they, they were really so much enthusiastic people. And um, it's okay that they sometimes they uh, they forgot about what I what I did or what I said the last week. But there is I found many many ways to make them uh, don't forget about it or like uh, uh, or um, remember it so much easy. And uh, they had like competition in the in the last year, and they were making some uh, web pages uh, for their moms. Um, it was in May, and um, and they really loved it. They were using uh, WebMaker, the sample tools. It's Mozilla tools, and uh, they were so much. They they felt that they learning something new because I found all of them addicted to Facebook, and they are using so much Facebook. Like they added all of them added me on Facebook, and I spent two months explaining that I can't accept them, and I ended up by accepting them. So, but it was really a good, a good experience for me because, uh, because I, I, I feel like I shared my learnings with some people who, who never, never thought that they, they are able to make something like that. Like they even I, I learned, I teach them how to make even the header of Facebook, and they were really surprised. Like uh, they had many ideas, and they want to continue more. But I'm sad because like the connection is um, is like so much bad now. Like we, I don't know anything about one of them. But all of them were amazing, and all of them were uh, like always uh, present in the uh, in the sessions. And I had another opportunity too. Uh, it was with uh, Outreachy. I think all of you knew Outreachy already. Um, Mm -hmm. no. Okay, so Outreach is a program made by GNOME uh, community and it helps, uh, it's it for helping uh, women to get involved in open source projects. How? Like, um, so uh, by internship and uh, like all the, open, all the other open source community will provide some projects uh, to work in during your internship and you like search and find the project and you apply and then if you got accepted you will be uh, an, inter an intern for three months during the, uh, uh, during the summer or the uh, winter and, um, and, yeah, and you, will, you will be paid but you will gain many things for that because you will, you will keep your uh, communication with that uh, 
with that uh, community and you will get involved afterward uh, in their project and maybe you will be a contributor or something. So I had the same, but it was with Mozilla, okay, that I, I'm already uh, with Mozilla before outreachy, but really with this opportunity I learned so much. Um, not just technical things, but mostly other, many, many other things about Mozilla and that I, I keep, um, I keep um, my contribution with Mozilla because it was just after Firefox OS and like everyone was upset uh, after the end of this project. So maybe this opportunity like gets me back to, uh, to think more about continuing uh, in Mozilla. And uh, the other opportunity that I, I want to share is about the tech speaker program because really I love this program. Uh, it's more about uh, helping the public uh, the speakers, uh, the technical speakers, uh, to learn more about public speaking. Um, they provide some uh, master classes, tech briefing, uh, some uh, sessions to learn more about uh, how to make, how to write a good CFP, how to uh, sketch your presentation, how to uh, talk, how to give uh, a constructive feedback. And it's really uh, an amazing opportunity. And I was in the women pilot, uh, like we were just two women in my session. And uh, I, I have seen like all of them uh, continued in that um, and, uh, in, the, in the text speaking and uh, it was great because after that we had uh, a mixed uh, cohort in the last summer and this one like we had many many we, we are getting many many women involved in this program too mm -hmm. yeah as you see here like there are many of them and yeah okay not all of us are women but we are different, and we are from different cultures, from different uh, from different countries, and uh, we are so happy because we were uh, in a meetup and we are sharing our um, our knowledge, our our thoughts, and uh, we were like uh, working on the upcoming, on the future of the tech speaker and uh, the next cohort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is like explain a little bit my uh, path as a woman in uh, open source communities. It wasn't really straightforward because as I'm from different uh, culture, like women is not really allowed to do many, many things. And, but I was like always fighting and uh, trying to improve the position of, uh, of women that can do many things as a man. And it's not like we will be equal, but we can do many things uh, in the IT uh, in the IT world that even men couldn't do it or something. But uh, it was really hard. Uh, like never gave up and never uh, never like say no. Uh, I'm not good in programming. I'm not. They they will not accept me or there is some woman I know that they are using, um, using a fake names on GitHub, for example, like uh, men, men names just to, to not be shown as, as a woman because some people like they are uh, 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 deleting their code or they don't accept their pull requests or something like that, but it's not, I, I'm not like encouraging them about them, about that they have to, uh, they have to show themselves in the, uh, in the open source community more and more. And yeah, thank you. Uh, any questions? Yes. So you are saying that you fight for more, for more women in uh, open source communities. How do you do that without discriminating men? No, yeah, we are not discriminating men because, like, this, if you if you look more to the statistic of the first communities, you will find like there is a few, few, really so much few women getting involved in communities. 
in open source communities. So, because they choose to, I think. Because they were like, they had some problems, but as I said, you have never gave up. Like, like because they just, maybe they have some problem with someone and they, they gave up just because of that reason and they didn't uh, go forward and that's it. So that's, that's their own problem, that's why they did that. But if like, uh, if like the men will be uh, encouraging the women to, uh, to embrace the, um, the open source communities, it will be more helpful to not get them away of that. But why do you encourage just women? Why not everyone? I don't understand. Because I'm encouraging everyone for my side, but because the number of women is so much uh, less than the number of, like, when I say less, it's not like a half, like more than half, less than half. So uh, you have to encourage the, uh, the minus number than the plus one. I think firing men would be more easy. <laughs> God bless. Um, Let's just do that. Well, if they want it's to talk to you, they should. If they don't. Uh, for example, in, in my um, generation, there is a huge problem. In, I go to an information technology school, mm -hmm. and there are very few women and very few people who are interested in tech. So I think that um, we should en encourage everyone. Women can have problems, men can have problems, everyone can have problems. So I think when you encourage just women, you are just doing the same evil things what men <laughs> did in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's not really about my presentation. It wasn't really encouraging just women. Like, if you noticed at first, I was talking about diversity and inclusion. That means whatever your 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 gender, woman or or man or whatever, you can be involved in the. Uh, you have to be involved in the open source community if you are passionate about that. That's the big issue. And as you said, there is many many in my country, for example. Uh, in the uh, computer science universities, you will find women more than men, but no one of them is, is patient about that. Like, they are just studying uh, computer science and that's it. They will end up at home. That's a huge problem of them. Like, um, I had many discussions with them, like, they are not interested. They just went to that university for some reasons or for some personal reasons and that's it. But I'm, I'm talking more about the community, the big community. Uh, if, there is, if there is some women that they have the patient and they want to get involved, but they are like uh, fighting with some other people who are from different religion or culture or, or gender or whatever, we need to start that. It's not just about men and women. It's about getting the uh, open source community is more, more diverse, and that's it. Okay, but I still not understand why is woman written there, so I think... Because I'm a woman! <laughs> <My God. Yeah. laughs> because I'm a woman and I'm talking about my experience as a woman in the oh. open source communities. That's why it's written woman there. And it's like... Just this is like a piece of Mozilla about women plus web, like it's strong, like we are making the web strong, just to encourage themselves more. Just look around in this room, and that's the answer why we need more uh, women in, in this IT and the persons community. Well, I don't think that's an answer because uh, men choose to go here, and why it why that's a problem if less women choose to. We need to force women to go here. Not forcing. No. Not what forcing. Is it? You, you can't force anyone. You can't force women or neither men to do anything. You can't even force yourself. Well, the first step you have to ask why they don't come here. And yeah, that's it. That's, yeah, that's, if you ask them why, they will say something that maybe it happened here 
and you never get to recognize the power. But you just you just have to ask them because they are like so much shy, so much ashamed about something, and they can't speak up. That's that's the problem. Like you have to let them speak it up. Ah, you are not convinced. I'm sorry. <laughs>